Hey everyone, Matt from Stronger Your Personal Training here. Today we're going through getting air into your back, why it's important and who needs to focus on it. So in a nutshell, what we're looking at is with a regular brace, we wanna see 360 degrees of expansion. And that's really common. I'm sure you've seen that advice before, but a lot of people tend to focus on getting this expansion exclusively through the midriff, forgetting the fact that rib cages expand too. Ribs actually move and they separate as you breathe in and there's expansion there as well. It's not just one bone. So quite commonly what we'll see is lifters who get really focused on, you may be done a little bit of reading on breathing and bracing, and you're really focused on not overextending, right? So that's, that's good advice. You don't wanna just be throwing yourself way out here, very hard to get a good strong brace. But the counterpoint to that is we'll often see lifters who go from doing their squats like this, right? And then they'll get into, okay, now I need to like tuck and round and they'll get air into their lower back. But if you look at my mid back, it actually stays quite flat and it's very hard for me to really get adequate air into my rib cage. So a good analogy for this is if you think about a Russian nesting doll, right? You've got a little bottom half and a top half that sits on top. Now this is your pelvis and it's your rib cage, right? And they need to sit together. The reason why we see this sort of overextension as an issue is because your pelvis rolls forward and then your rib cage opens up forward as well. Now we've got all this compression going on in the back and you're spilling out the front, meaning all your abdominal pressure and your diaphragm falls out anteriorly. So we wanna to try to avoid that as much as we can, but at the same time, not go too far the other way or compensate in different ways. Our goal is to have this Russian nesting doll sit on top of each other or both halves face each other and they're stacked properly, they're not sitting forward or backward at all. And what happens when you don't get enough air into your back and you simply go and flex, is you go from this open position here to just correcting the first half where you're bringing the pelvis back to center. Now the rib cage is stuck forward. And if my thumbs make the line here, you're going from there to there. And there you see, because I can't break my spine into two pieces, I have to round my lower back a little more. That's the part that gets missed with a lot of people. And then they'll find that they can get their upper back tight and they can set their lats really tight, but inevitably there ends up being a bunch of movement in their lower back because their ribs are positioned too far forward in the first place. So what do we do about this? Well, we start by understanding that the ribs on the front need to move back and in. Meaning that if I stand here, I'm not necessarily trying to do a crunch, but the ribs, because of how your diaphragm and your abs are gonna act on the rib cage, the ribs are gonna move this way. And you see how I get almost like a little lat spread going on there. So if you can get that, you'll see right away, the shape of my lower back changes there. Now I've got a little bit more of a neutral curve. Now I've got a fairly deep spinal curve, just shape of my spine, it is what it is. But I want you really looking at the expansion that happens in the back. So it's not so much the shape that matters, but as I breathe in, you'll see compared to that first example where my ribs are stuck forward, my pelvis is rolled back where my main expansion comes from my lower back exclusively you'll find i can actually inflate my mid and my upper back just as much as my lower back here so we'll show you the first one first so if i'm here and i really let my hips roll back and even just breathing and bracing here okay so if we change that into getting the sensation of internally rotating these ribs and having them pull in and back, and then try to breathe into the mid back, you'll see that I get a lot more expansion there. My torso angle will probably look better in my squat. My hips will look more mobile, and I'll be able to create more stability as I go through the movement. So the way I'm gonna cue this is I'm gonna get under the bar, and I'm gonna breathe out until I feel like my mid back actually pushes out a little bit. You'll feel like your abs, of course, get pretty tight from doing it as well. If you're wearing a belt, it's a really good feedback point because you're gonna feel like your obliques stiffen up against the belt and your lower ribs, if you're wearing the belt kind of up by your waist there, your lower ribs are actually gonna push out against the belt. You wanna hold on to that sensation. From there, once you've got that expansion, you're gonna try to breathe into that expansion, almost like you're breathing behind a suit of armor where this is tight because you've set it with the exhale. And as you breathe in, you're breathing into the mid back, trying to get expansion. So. Take a look at my mid back here as I go through this exhale and inhale and watch how it grows as I breathe in instead of just my lower back moving. So here I'm in place.
right? And of course, you know, this isn't going to look dramatically different because it is an empty bar, but under load, those stability differences do make a difference. I purposely left plates off the bar today just because getting that pure sagittal view where you can see right down uh, as a cross section of my body is going to be easier to see and the plates tend to block that a little bit. But you can see that expansion happen a little bit more in the mid back when I position myself here. So I'll show you with a little bit of weight, move the camera over a bit just so you can see the difference in actual spine position and how it looks with a bit of load through the system. But I'll show you again that first rep where I flattened out my upper back too much and I've really focused too much about expanding my lower back and focus too much on the midriff. And then the second rep, I'll show you what it looks like where I've got uniform expansion through my whole trunk as opposed to just at the midriff. So I'm not trying to fudge anything here or kind of deliberately contort myself to, to prove a point that may or may not be valid. I'm just letting my body move in a way that it feels most comfortable with the style of brace that I'm trying to show there. So, so you can see in that second set there where I deliberately focus on exhaling before I unrack and getting that expansion through my mid back that I get a lot more spring out of the bottom of the squat and that my spine stays a lot more still as I go through the movement. I'm not getting as much butt wink or spinal extension as I come out of the hole. And overall, I can just keep a more rigid spine, which is gonna help me create more power and just less power loss through the rest of the movement. If you have back problems, it can be a good starting point as well as learning how to understand that expansion through the upper back. And we'll do the same thing now and we'll just take a look at how it looks in a deadlift as well. So for the deadlift, this idea of creating the expansion in the back of the ribs and creating more uniform expansion of the whole torso instead of the abs specifically, holds true as well. So we can take a look at starting position. You'll see a lot of lifters like this where they really try to arch, but they never seem to be able to set their back properly. Uh, th those are a good example. Another good example is those lifters who maybe are a little bit more hypermobile and they'll be able to set up with what looks like a flat back, but as they start to pull their lower back will round a little bit or the bar will drift out or some combination of those three, right? So I'll show you kind of first that idea of overemphasizing the expansion through the lower back or just simply not understanding how to get expansion into the mid back and upper back. And you'll see how as much as I really try, I can never quite set my lower back into what looks like a neutral curve without either just completely overextending my whole spine or just not being able to get into position in the first place. So here we go. So there, I'm really thinking about like pushing my chest out, lifting my chest up, really common cues you'll hear, but you see how there, I do actually have a little bit of flexion in my lower back compared to how much extension I have going on here where I'm actually really flat through my mid back. And I'm not fudging anything again, I'm trying to set my lats as hard as I can, but that's as far as I can move. So we'll use that same idea we used with the squat where you use a full exhale to set the rib cage in place and then breathe into the mid back where you can feel that expansion. Again, if you've got a belt, use that as a, as a reference point. Even if it's not heavy, it works really well to give you some feedback in terms of feeling where your expansion is coming from. So before I go down to the bar, I'm gonna breathe out until I feel these lower ribs here push backwards and they're gonna expand a little bit. And then I'm gonna to try to breathe into that to try to fill them up with air a little bit more. So. And you can see the difference in my starting position there, right? It looks like I have more curve in my lower back. My upper back is still fairly tight. My lats are pretty set, but I'm not having to really crank extension. I can focus on just staying rigid and creating a 360 degree brace as opposed to just 180 degree brace where I'm just trying to extend as much as I can. And that results in really not a great lower back position. Even if you do get it flat, it's not gonna be very stable. And you can see as I start to pull, if I sort of jam myself up here, I'm gonna be a lot more prone to tipping forward and having my chest whip in front of me compared to if I set the ribs and breathe into the upper back, the bar's gonna stay a lot closer to me, so. And basically any point through that lift, whether it be from the ground, coming up a little bit, or right at lockout, my ribs up to my shoulders stay basically in the same position as I go through the whole lift. 
that's all I've got for this week in terms of covering some concepts with bracing that might not always get understood properly or considered properly. And give them a shot. See how they feel with your squat and your deadlift and your other big lifts. See if it feels like you can lock in your bracing a little bit better by getting more air into that mid and upper back, not just focusing on lower back. Remember, Russian nesting doll. If you're stuck here, it's not so great for bracing. You're not gonna get as solid of a brace. Just rolling the hips back doesn't fix that Russian nesting doll. We need the hips and the ribs to come back so that everything sets together and you get equal amounts of expansion in the front as you do in the back. So everything blows up like a balloon, not like a dented pop can. See you next week. Like the information you're seeing, but not sure how to apply it to your own training. My name is Matt Taylor and I'm the head coach and founder at Stronger You Personal Training. I've been coaching powerlifting since 2014 and competing in it myself since 2009. All of my lifters have either taken medals on the platform at the competitions they've competed at, gotten over an injury that's been preventing them from training properly, hit PRs in their training, so they're getting personal records and getting stronger over time, or some combination of those three points. If you're interested in getting in touch with me for some coaching inquiries, you can send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook, or an email from matt at strongerupt.com. I'll leave a link to also get in touch with me on the Instagram bio and below in the YouTube description. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.